Tell us about your business. My name is Sierra Hushiari, and I'm the founder of New Age Drinks. We launched Brain Pop, which is a clean caffeine beverage. It's jitter-free. We launched it when I won a government grant in 2021 at the end of the pandemic. I was working on the pandemic response team at UCSF, and the physicians and healthcare workers were my inspiration, particularly the surgeons who were caffeine-sensitive. <clears throat> we actually had a bet with one of the surgeons. I he was taking a medication called propanolol and i said i think i can make a jitter free blend so um this product has uh we initially started off with four flavors the nutrition uh panel is kind of summarized on the side with this easy to read and access summary it has a clean caffeine botanical caffeine blend um green tea extract green coffee bean and guarana there are co-nutrients such as vitamin d and taurine magnesium and L-theanine, which help with hydration and mental clarity. We also have another flavor called Mojito Madness. This one was Dragonberry Warrior. The flavors are fun and sassy. They can be used for a morning boost, evening slump, or as a mocktail or cocktail mixer. So they are multifunctional. We also use the tagline Drink to Think, which is highlighted on the side of the can with this beautiful light bulb doodle and we want to inspire the inner light within, as well as brain nutrition and brain health in the greater community. I suffered a brain injury in college. I was at, at Cornell. I was a sophomore doing Doctors Without Borders, without a Doctors Without Borders kind of program. It was a humanitarian program in Costa Rica, and I was in a coma for four days. Uh, many years later, I always thought there would be, if there was an opportunity for me to share my story, I would be very uh, grateful and excited. I sort of feel like an advocate for the brain injury community as well as raising awareness, um, you know, with regards to how many vets come back from combat, for instance, with brain injuries, as well as people who suffer brain injury and TBI from and post concussion syndrome from from sports like the NFL. Um, I think it's uh, not really understood fully and um, raising awareness about it is really important because it could happen to anyone. The early adopter community has been pretty diverse. We had Bill O'Reilly comment on Brain Pop a couple times on his show last year. We've had uh, individuals in the Midwest who are, for instance, recovering alcoholics. They want to drink healthier alternatives. They want to substitute uh, and and reduce their Coke and Pepsi con consumption. Uh, drink Brain Pop because it only has seven grams of sugar, so it's diabetic friendly. We also have had, um, you know, a number of influencers. They are millennials. They're Gen Z uh, who are sober curious, really flock towards Brain Pop. What are some of your biggest challenges in growing your business? One of the challenges was I have an academic background. And so I had a very academic approach to this project. I worked at Cornell Food Ventures and the Brooklyn Cannery to bring Brain Pop to market. I applied for grants. I had some savings. I received loans that were for small businesses and women-owned businesses, but I didn't really realize, and as many case studies I read, nothing could have truly prepared me for the obstacles and the truly dynamic and, and uh, versatile nature of the beverage industry. Um, a lot of the beverage industry is also about who you know, how much money you have, and what distributor you can access. So when I was entering the market, I found very early on that it was going to be much more difficult and different than I could have ever imagined. How did you overcome these challenges? I mean, I think I took an analytical approach. I think my corporate background helped me navigate the field in a very logical and methodical way. But I also have an entrepreneurial spirit. I had that brain injury. And the whole recovery process was a very um, unique uh, process that required quite a bit of trial and error. So I just tried a lot of things, went towards any and every distributor, talked to anyone. To this day, you know, I have a very open-minded approach about how to make this successful. I don't have one final solution or one final answer. Today, functional beverages have a very unique place in consumers' mind. Consumers read a lot more labels. They're much more educated and aware about reading the nutrition facts, facts panel, about hidden ingredients. Um, and most importantly, we focus on the brain market with the drink to think tagline and uh, some research, particularly there was a McKinsey quarterly report a couple of years ago that wrote about the brain supplement and nutrition market. And that market is doing really well. People are more interested and aware about the mind body connection and what they eat affects their mind and their body. And they are interested in nutrients that help support brain health. 
How did you learn about the CNPP? I learned about CNPP through Eric. Eric was incredibly, Eric Cha was so helpful along the uh, all the phases of applying for the NJDA microloan. I finally was able to get the microloan and bring the next batch of brain pop to market last year. How has the CNPP helped in your business development? So helpful every step along the way. The webinars were great. The community is very interactive and engaging. Follow-up was also great too. How is your business doing these days? Business is really struggling. I don't want to lie. It's a very difficult business. It requires a lot of money for brand activation, upwards a million dollars. We started with pennies on the dollar compared to that. I, you know, was substituting, uh, subsidizing the month monthly expenses with my savings. I won a government grant, I got a loan, but the industry is really expensive to start to launch in and shipping beverages is very expensive because of the weight. So, you know, we have a shipping problem in this country with regards to e-commerce and uh, we haven't yet found or created a shipping solution for heavy products like beverages. And I think the solution is just to stick and stay with it for a number of years to create early adopters who then become lifetime consumers. But more importantly, I think today's day and age is not so much about trying to sell someone something, but as more, it's more about engaging a community around a like-minded community around the mission and the principle. People are more interested in what you're doing for society is about what, as instead of what society or what you know, the world is doing for you. So it's really important to have a sustainability plan. We would like to become the first one day if anything were possible. For instance, we would love to work with Surat Technology. They're one of the first and leading high printing, high frequency printing companies. They initially launched in the automotive um, industry category. They received like a couple series of funding from like Mercedes, Tesla, so on and so forth, but they've never worked with a can company. So if we were able to use some of their technology to make cans um, 100%, have a 100% zero carbon footprint and be recycled more efficiently. You know, we could become industry innovators and disruptors. Obviously that stuff takes money, but it's really important to have a vision in place to resonate with consumers and um, speak to them in a meaningful way. We've been using a lot of guerrilla marketing tactics, for instance, in place of online marketing. We have been doing a lot of demos at supermarkets, and that has been great to spread the word in the local New York City community. We're currently sold at, in Dumbo Markets in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. like the one on Front Street and on Smith Street. We're also sold throughout the West Side Markets in New York City, and we're working with an, working with an amazing distributor, Gotham. This month, actually, just as we speak, we've signed a contract and we're moving forward with them. So we're going to be in Fairway Markets. And it's all about community support and doing things in small ways. People want a get-rich-quick scheme. There's This is not a get-rich-quick scheme at all. Um, it's very much like, you know, I sort of compare it to like going to medical school or, you know, it takes 10 years to become a really good physician. It's kind of like that. This is very much about a marathon and not a sprint. Do you anticipate any new challenges for your business? I think some of the challenges, the new challenges are going to be the challenges that I've described, such as the increasing cost of shipping and weighted products, just costing a lot more to ship. Um, if the government could offer like an earned income tax credit or some sort of tax credit for companies that do heavy, uh, have, have heavy products and ship, that would be really helpful. That would be a great start. Uh, companies and brands that have programs for startups are a great avenue for innovation. We're working with Cisco. They have a small business program. We are one of the few companies selected to be showcased at their event next month in May. Um, I think it's May 10th. We're going to be showcased across their 12 different events across the country. They're in different locations with their Cisco employees to integrate new innovative artisan products into the Cisco food uh, program and, and pathway. Um, those are, those are large structural innovations from corporations that really can help startups with new market entry. What milestones do you want to achieve going forward? I think one of the high level goals we have the vision for the next five to 10 years would be to create a new product category in the nightlife scene to make not drinking cool. We've collected quite a bit of research in the past months about the um, 
interest of the general community and public to drink less and have substitutes. Um, and I feel, we feel very much like the nightlife scene is underserved with the functional beverage possibilities and options. I mean, Brain Pop is just such a cute can. It would be so fashionable in your like Louis Vuitton bag or, you know, in a bar to be drinking instead of an alcoholic beverage, especially if you have an early morning the next day. And it's something that's not really talked a lot about, you know, the, um, the, some of the health issues and risks of drinking and instead substituting with a healthy alternative beverage that has nutrients and minerals that support brain health, like magnesium and vitamin D. Brain Pop has 60% daily value of magnesium and vitamin D alone. And L-creatine can help with hydration, so on and so forth. But if we could create a community of people who love and support brain health and brain nutrition, I think that would be um, so much more than self people I can because that's not what we want to do we want to bring people together around the topic that really changed my life which was experiencing a brain injury I was at Cornell and I was doing a pre-med major I also had worked ironically coincidentally with a neurologist the semester before I experienced this event and I remember thinking you know this wasn't taught in school this wasn't in my textbook why didn't anyone tell me about these kinds of brain injuries they're so unique and um, very specific to the individual. So I think um, bringing people together around the topic of brain health, mental health awareness is really on point with a lot of things that people care about and can resonate with. I think small businesses need a lot. They need like a, a lot of structure and support. When you're transitioning out of, for instance, as I was with my corporate job, I realized that, you know, I had a lot of skills, but it was so much easier for me to get things done under pressure and difficult tasks done when I was in a structured environment. So programs like the one that you provide and um, small business grants and loans, loans that have low interest rates below market, loans that are forgivable, so on and so forth, are incredible programs to incentivize people to pursue entrepreneurship and small business. The crux and heart of American culture and American values lies within entrepreneurship and innovation. And I always tell, I always say that no one can do entrepreneurship and innovation better than an individual, an individual who might've worked at a corporation and experienced a problem and, you know, wants to bring something to the table. I was able to bring this product to market. You know, I have a little bit of a chemistry background. I work with Cornell Food Ventures and then the Brooklyn Cannery to uh, formulate the product, but, and bring it to market. But um, so many people helped along the way you know, from the person in the FDA internally who taught me how to understand the databases. There was just a lot of kindness and this was truly a labor of love for the American public and people. And with that having been said, programs that help support entrepreneurship are really helpful so that people can take the leap um, and devote time every week to something that they're really passionate about. Also, uh, I would really advocate for like earned income tax credits if that's something that like you know, if anything were possible, um, especially in the shipping space, because as I mentioned, shipping is so expensive. I also think that there's a lot of an unfair advantage to, of unfair advantage to large companies that have a precedent and established presence in industry. They already have SEO, you know, they don't have to pay as much to get viewers attention and eyes. So if, for instance, Google and Facebook offered credits to startups, right? Through local small business programs like yours. That would be an amazing way to incentivize e-commerce um, diversity and comp true competition, which is, you know, the, the essence of capitalism. So I think sometimes people get overwhelmed by the problem that they forget that the solutions are, are really just like a step away. They're just a couple things away. You can really create great solutions with um, small adjustments. So I think it's important to focus on that. And you know what? your organization is doing, for instance, is incredible because it's able to help support entrepreneurs through the early phases of the process so that we don't shut down after month three or month, you know, even 18 months. A lot of the success happens when you least expect it. And, and after a lot of trial and tribulation and trial and error. Any advice you want to share with other entrepreneurs? Find like-minded individuals who support your project and your, and your um, vision and just take it a little bit every day. You know, there's a lot of failure that comes uh, in today's 
startup life, but it's important to just keep moving through it and know that the success is going to happen when you least expect it. Mm -hmm.